Hi everybody! Hi. Welcome back to Tea with Phil and Jen. So today we're going to do a side-by-side -side tasting. Same tea but different vessels. One is porcelain guy one and the other one is uh, Yixing Zisha teapot. Yeah, so we're excited to do this tasting. Um, many of you are regular users of guy one and uh, Yixing uh, clay teapot. So uh, we're going to answer one of the age-old questions is what is the flavor difference? I'm a little or is there any or flavor? Is there one? I'm a right. little bit skeptical if I will be able to tell the difference, so let's dive on in. Let's do it. So we chose to do a top grade Lepsum Suchom today because we've been dying to do another black tea tasting with you guys. And um, and the reason we chose Lepsum is we only have one teapot for black tea, and that is our cute little Lepsum Suchom teapot that you see here. I'm just gonna quickly warm up the vessels and put the keys in. Get it all in there. So, lap some sutram on the left and lap some sutram on the right. Oh, that smells fantastic. Smell the uh, smokiness. I usually don't rinse this tea, but this time I did it because I want the flavor to come out a little bit faster. It wouldn't, because we're doing the video, I wouldn't be able to just uh, have an extra infusion, right? We want to yeah, like uh, do the regular, because when we have that at home, we just uh, drink that to 10. Eight more infusions, but here we want to do something like, you know, two, three infusions with a smackdown. Yes, with a famous smackdown at the end. Yeah. Okay. And we want to do a blind tasting. Not blind for me, but... Blind like, for me. Yeah. I'm a little bit skeptical if I'll be able to tell the difference. So I'm gonna, we're going to do a little mixy-mixy uh, behind my back. Yeah, so you wouldn't know which one is. And I won't know who's who, and we will we'll see if I'm able to detect a difference. Yeah, okay. Gonna do the first of brewing. So as you probably noticed that the uh, teapot, the tea actually comes out a little bit slower because it's a really small tea leaf. It kind of clock the uh, spout and stuff. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna just uh, pull the this out faster, and as you can see, it's a little bit clumsy. Even though you feel like the brewing time is different, but I'm just uh, trying to control that the result will be a little bit similar. Right, because mm -hmm. that teapot is so slow to empty, whereas the guy one is just a just a really quick it's, it's pour. A, And eventually we would know if uh, I did a great job or not by just uh, tasting the That's intensity right. of the tea. So let's have a look at the liquor here. Mm -hmm. the, um, did a great job getting those consistent. It looks pretty similar from our side. Mm -hmm. So you can see deep. Wow, even room. though this one sat in the gaiwan for longer, the teapot is slightly darker. I'm getting a little bit of a redder tinge. Yeah, I think so. Mm -hmm. I see. Yeah, Pretty good a though. little bit. Pretty spot on. Okay, now it's time for you to look away so I can pour in the Right, cup. okay, this is the moment of truth. I'm a little bit nervous. <laughs> Alright. Here we go. Uh, how am I going to do that? So yes. you guys will know what's going on and I will not. So I have averted my eyes. Yes. Just let me know when I can look back. Okay, okay. Yeah? No, 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 not yet, not yet. <laughs> Don't worry, I have no idea what's going on. Okay. Okay, is I me mean, I'm pouring. <laughs> I shouldn't laugh too much. Here is this one. Okay, I'm ready. Great. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
So, uh, so which one do you want to start? Is it the oldest? Doesn't thing? matter. I'm going to just give them both a smell. Mm -hmm. I've got the white cup in my left hand, clear Same cup here. in my right hand. This is a fantastic tea. I just want to say for those of you concerned about the smokiness and not liking the smokiness in Lapsam Sutram, this is a tea worth trying because the smoke is there, but it's you, just... Do you smell the difference? Yes. I smelled one smelled a little bit smokier, the white one. The white one has more smell. This one is more con contagious? Uh, yeah, yeah. Contained or just... Contained. Yeah. I wasn't sure if it was the uh, actual the cup. So both cups are, um, one is porcelain, one is glass, but none of them has a porous structure there, so supposedly not to affect the taste too much. Mm -hmm, that's right, just a little bit of a different bevel on the end, which... When I smell that, I totally forget which one is which. I gotta check, <laughs> I gotta check the video. I guess it's a double blind now. <laughs> Don't spit it. There was a squirrel running by. Okay, I'm getting some... The difference is really minor. I feel like the glass one is a tart. Yes. More tart. Like... A little bit more tart, and I feel like... I'm going to guess that that is the teapot one. I first I thought it was in the porcelain this because the porcelain tough. had a more smoky nose. Mm -hmm. But then as I continued to taste, they both had pretty good, the pretty expected amount of smokiness balanced with sweetness. But now then the glass started to have that tart. It to me it almost tastes like even like like it's an tartar. earthy an earthy tartness. So for me, I'm going to guess that this is the teapot. But it. It pretty much is a guess. Huh. Mm. Actually, I, for me, the big giveaway, because cause I never, I've never done any um, side by side, side, by side, side like this, but I have uh, the experience that this tea I brewed in a guy one, then I brewed in a teapot, and I say, oh, that's different. So I have the impression that the teapot is always absorbed some of the fragrant. So when I lift that, when I just uh, uh. have the tea, uh, the cups, I wasn't, I forgot for some reason, I forgot which one was which, but when I smelled that, uh, for me that was a giveaway. Which one has more aroma? So you think I got it? By big, I guess this is I the, gotta check for the... We gotta uh, check, but <laughs> we think that I've got it here. I feel like hmm. after, let's finish this. I part. didn't know about that aroma absorbing property though. So it was really, I'm going to just call it blind luck on my part. For me, it was more the earthy texture that I got at the end of the taste mm -hmm. in the glass that led me to that conclusion. So maybe right answer, wrong reason, or maybe right answer, right reason. So this, this is, is guy, one. guy one. Yes. This is the teapot, see? It just from the serving pot when you smell it, it's yeah. The smoke is more is uh, more subdued. Yes, it, as you said, it's it's as if the 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 clay teapot absorbs some of that aroma, some of that fragrance. Mm -hmm. Which one was which again? I forgot. Which one should I pour? No, I'm not sure. I think yeah. I think you put that one in the glass. According to the aromas, that's how you did it. Okay, perfect. You go first. Thank you. So I tasted that first. I'm going to do them in reverse order this time. I'm going to taste the... No, this is the tea, yeah, teapot first. So I confusing. I think because we're so nervous. Every time we shoot a video, I don't know what's going on. Mm. This is the teapot. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it's definitely the same way you poured them the first time. It does have that. 
as it cools, that tartness is a little more pronounced at the back of the taste. Mm. I wish it's a combination. It would be better. I love the aroma of the guy one, but I love the taste of the teapot better. It's softer, like that tart, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. uh, sharp, where you have. But if you have a tea that is like really crisp, like you like that refreshing, crispy uh, mm -hmm. taste of it, I think a guy one does a great job of right. delivering that. Right, right. So we're just uh, brewing a little bit more. But I want to mention one thing that um, we talk about the Gaiwan and teapot differences, but actually there are lots of different materials even in Gaiwan. You have uh, porcelain ones, you have glasses, uh, glass ones, or um, what else? Uh, We've definitely seen some strange materials with teapots, like jade even. Yes, uh, with Teapot. You've got pottery gaiwans, some of yes. them glazed, some of them unglazed. Yeah, so it's mm -hmm. really like a gaiwan and teapot difference is not a perfect way to uh, describe this. Right. It's more like a, um, porous. Yeah. In terms of a... Yeah, yeasting clay porous versus yes. inert vessel would be maybe a better phrasing, like a yeah. porcelain gaiwan or glass. Yeah, because I think if you use a, like a porcelain gaiwan or a pottery gaiwan, you will still have something similar effect. Not quite identical in terms of uh, the flavor, but I think it will still absorb a little bit of the aroma. Right, right. So that brings us to how do you choose when you're sitting down to choose between a porcelain gaiwan or a yeasting clay teapot? What are some of the factors to consider? Uh, so I think one of the biggest ones is probably the experience you're looking for vis-a-vis -vis the flavor. As we saw, there was definitely a, a difference. I, I'm a little bit shocked actually, but it was a noticeable difference and it was a pleasant difference from the clay teapot to the gaiwan. So if you just want to sit down and have a great experience with your tea, by all means, use your teapot. Like that's, that's why you get them, so that you can use them and, and make tea with them and enjoy it. Mm -hmm. If you're looking for a more technical interaction with the tea, for example, when we do tastings for the website, we never use a clay teapot because we're looking for a really clean depiction of what is the tea doing. We don't want other elements. If you want to isolate the tea and you're doing something for your own personal, sure, it's still fun, but you might be looking for a little education from the tea or really trying to get to the bottom of what's going on with the tea. Pick something that's inert like a porcelain guy one, definitely. Mm -hmm. And. I think one other factor to consider is how many people are enjoying the tea, mm -hmm. how much tea you want to brew. So the vessel size really matches the uh, group size, you know, like this small teapot, mini, right? Mm -hmm. If two of us having tea, I think that's perfect. But if there are eight people, ten people, I cannot cut, uh, catch up with this. Little guy, uh, this little teapot. I have to use a bigger guy one or any other stuff. So that's definitely one of the things I like to consider when yeah. I choose. Yeah, yeah, definitely. You got to be practical about choices like that. Right. So slightly related to the first point is also if you haven't used your teapot in a long time, uh, you do need to use them with some uh, some certain frequency so that they get the care and attention that they need and deserve. So that could be a, a, another factor in considering which vessel to use. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to give both teas a big smackdown. That's right, it's time for the smackdown. Mm -hmm. So this is the part in our brewing, uh, you may have seen some of our other tastings where we like to, uh, we often at the third or fourth steep, we just give them a really long steep. Mm -hmm. So lucky for you, we don't make you wait for the whole infusion time, but we will be there with the result. Right. Do you have a preference? Like, which one do you prefer? Honestly, I either don't have a flavor preference or I'm slightly leaning towards Gaiwan in this case. Uh, pr maybe just because I'm used to okay. enjoying this tea from a Gaiwan. Um, but, uh, but I don't... Again, the difference to me was was at the end of the uh, experience, and it wasn't. Uh, it definitely wasn't bad from the teapot mm -hmm. by any mm -hmm. stretch. Um, how about you? The opposite. That's oh. why I asked. So for mm -hmm. me, it's um, aroma is optional. By optional, is not saying it's not important. I love how aroma plays in my mouth. 
more important than how I smell. So that for me is a disadvantage of a teapot, a Yixing teapot, but mm -hmm. I'm okay with that. But in terms of the mouthfeel and uh, mm -hmm. the flavor, like it just uh, make everything more tied up together, a little bit rounder, that sharpness, uh, the tartness, the sharpness isn't mm -hmm. there. It, kind of make everything the more, refreshing aspect is more pronounced yeah yeah it's a rounder it's a thicker mouthfeel that i really enjoy so mm -hmm. and especially after i have one from the teapot then have another one from the guy one i was like oh that's so sharp right that's really tart when you go back to the teapot go back to the guy one it's oh, okay. tart the tartness oh, okay. is uh, something that Oh. I like to have a little bit there, but I don't want to be too much of that. Right, right, okay. Mm. Definitely teapot is my style of most feel and tasting. Mm. Quite different. Really yeah. quite different. And you're right, the mouthfeel is definitely rounder. And this is an interesting black tea, uh, as I've commented before. In terms of mouthfeel, I don't think he, I've ever had a, maybe one exception, but uh, a black tea with such a big mouthfeel, uh, mm. that silkiness is not common in black tea. This one has a really nice silky mouthfeel. Silky, uh, silky, thick, mm -hmm. really rich. Mm -hmm. It's really, um, there's a, a prof, like a flavor profile you can pick, like, you know, smoky and stuff, sure. but it's just not something only smoky. There's right. other elements that There's sweet. texture along with flavor. Exactly. This tea has real texture in the mouth, mm -hmm. full, round, velvety, silky, those kind of uh, things. Almost like what you get from a really nice, thick uh, shoe pouvoir, you know, like that silkiness. Mm -hmm. But with mm -hmm. all the aspects of a black tea, like that tart, Christmas, it's kind of mm -hmm. confusing. And that's sweet. Sometimes the black tea is too, like mm. a too berry, yeah. too sweet for me. And I like this one just a place in the background and it is there to balance the whole taste. And mm -hmm. I think that's, that's the reason. Like I, I have many teapots. This is the only black tea teapot. And this just for La Sam Sujong. And to be more specific in terms of La Sam Sujong, this is the tea that I have. So there is a reason. Mm -hmm. Let's see how this plays out. Ah, uh, the SmackDown results. Yes. I made a mistake. I should pour the teapot first. Oh, well. And as we've talked about before, you know, with uh, higher quality teas, oversteeping uh, is you get a lot more latitude with oversteeping, which is why we like to do a smackdown. It tells you a lot about the tea when you really hammer it. Mmm, that is nice. Like you say, the smokiness is there, but it's really, really subdued on the lid. But you, I noticed that this one is weaker. Much the aroma. weaker. Yeah, I don't have this almost aroma. Anything. This absorbed the aroma. Exactly. Right? Yeah, and now it's letting it out. Mm -hmm. It smells really good. This one smells mm -hmm. really good. It has it's smoky, even got some of the it's sweetness. sweet. Yep. It's sweet mm -hmm. floral. No, not floral. It's berry. Mm -hmm. Sweet, mm -hmm. fruity. That mm. I like that. Nice dark, almost, almost like a, a dark sherry color. Yep. Okay, I'm gonna go with my guy one first. Guy one first. Same here. I like to go from less yeah. preferred to what I like. Mm -hmm. This one barely have any smell. Mm -hmm. This, this one, one still has a little bit. The guy really one had subtle, a nice, but yeah, a nice still a little smell. bit. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, this lingers a long time. I'm going to just wait. I had the guy one. I got to let the lingering flavors. Mm. I like the long smell. Still mm -hmm. prefer the teapot. I still think mm -hmm, the mm -hmm. teapot tastes better. But of course, what we are talking uh, here about how the teapot or gaiwan affect the flavor is really generic, really, you know, very basic kind of effect. Oh, it absorbs the floor, or it uh, absorbs the aroma, or it it brings out the crisp. But I think, you know, even with the Yixin teapot, there are different clays, different mm -hmm. firing temperatures and right. stuff. Those all affects how the teapot affect, uh, like how the teapot perform in terms of the brewing. So that sums it up. We tried uh, Lapsam Suchom in a porcelain gaiwan and we used a Yixin clay teapot. We did this to see what is the flavor difference introduced between clay teapot and porcelain gaiwan. And I was pretty skeptical that I would be able to notice. I don't think I could have been further from wrong. Uh, wow. So what were the differences? First, aroma. The aroma from the gaiwan was uh, more booming and pronounced. It was yeah. really present, that smokiness. Whereas from the teapot, it was a little bit more subdued and integrated. Right. Second, mouthfeel. The teapot mouthfeel was rounder, fuller, mm -hmm. more reflective, if that makes sense. The gaiwan still a great mouthfeel, just not as polished, let's say. The difference is bigger than even I expected. Yeah, we've never done this side by side, so I'm really glad we did it. We always encourage people to do things side by side. You learn a lot. Finally, at the yeah. end of the flavor profile, I found they had quite a divergence, you know, later in the sip. One of them became more biting and tart. The other one was just more sort of balanced. Yeah, so I'm really glad we did this video on teapots. I mean, teapots are a really great topic in Chinese tea. There's so much to talk about. Um, we just kind of uh, touched on the surface in this video. We're looking forward to doing lots more videos on teapots for you guys. So please leave some comments down below uh, with questions and queries you might have about teapots. There's so much to talk about. There's conditioning, there's care, uh, what kind of teas, I mean, the list goes on. Uh, definitely let us know. We used, we mentioned that we use this teapot because uh, it's our only teapot dedicated to black tea. Well, more specifically, this teapot is actually dedicated to uh, top grade Lapsam Suchom. That's right. We uh, In the video, we really focused on just the tasting difference between the teapot and the gaiwan. We didn't dive in too much about the um, how the tasting profile mm -hmm. or tasting That's notes right. about this tea. It's actually a game changer for many people. It's the best lapsan sujo in the market, making uh, made by the um, the inventor of Jinju Mei, whose ancestor also invented the black tea process. Yeah. It comes from a uh, Tomuguan area, which is uh, the Tomuguan area, which is the uh, authentic black tea origin. Mm -hmm. So it's really changed a, a lot of people's mind about a lot of That's right. I mean, I can't, uh, there's been so many people who have approached me and said, I'm really not a fan of Lapsang or they're, they've, they thought they knew about Lapsang. And once they changed this, they're asking us, what just happened here? What is this? What is this? What is this Lapsang Suchong? Yeah. It's really, uh, it's, it's a game changer. Definitely. So uh, if you're interested in the full uh, tasting descriptions, be sure to check out the links below and have yourself a great day. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.